Hi there. Welcome to Discussions with the Fashion Masters. My name is Deanna Hansen. I'm the founder of Fluid Isometrics and Block Therapy, and I am being joined by our very special guest, Erica Leonard. Erica recently certified in Block Therapy as an instructor, and she has an amazing combination of modalities that she's going to be sharing, but I'm going to pass it over to you, Erica. So thank you so much for being here. Fantastic. Happy to be here. And why don't you dive in and first tell everybody how you found block therapy and what intrigued you so much about this practice? Beautiful. Um, Well, I am currently a a Pilates studio owner. I was classically trained um, and practiced classical Pilates for about 17 years, been in fitness for about mm, well over 20 years now. And um, I actually, one of my instructors brought block therapy to my attention and we had it um, about a year and a half, almost two years ago, we had it at one of our first retreats. And there was a lady in the Bahamas who came to visit us at our house and we had a beautiful group of people and she brought the blocks and it was interesting because we were supposed to have a combination of yoga and Pilates and block in our retreat and everybody found the block during that first session that we did and for the rest of the retreat it was what everybody wanted to do so we learned a lot about it very quickly during that time so I brought it back to Fort Lauderdale and um, have been practicing it for the last couple of months with our people and they're absolutely loving it so I really truly believe in in we can find the tools along our journey in life to help us heal ourselves and if you really kind of think about that in the bigger picture and you have the right tools you're given, um, you know, it's kind of a no brainer to be able to educate people and give them the tools and the proper vessels that they need to, to, to put into their everyday routine, a a way of healing their bodies. And it just kind of expedites their fitness routine. And in any ways, I feel that when you have a method such as Pilates or Legree is what, which we specialize in as well, it's such an intense method that you kind of kind of have to counteract it with something that will give them the time and space to be able to take it down a couple notches and get their body in the more of a relaxed state since they're always on the go and always strengthening to be able to bring it back down to earth and and give themselves a chance to really get to know their bodies and I find that that's what block therapy has really done for us when we help align, but when they're out of alignment, they really don't know until they get on the block and realize, wow, you know, my left side of the body and right side are two completely different places. And it really makes them connect deep into their core, no pun intended, of being able to figure out the root of their problems and how to take it to the next level of of healing. And then it just kind of it carries along in their journey of fitness because then they're able to work properly and their body is able to heal properly to be able to make their workouts more effective. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, So I know that the majority of people know at least in concept about Pilates, but you've targeted a very specific form of Pilates. Legree, can you talk a little bit about that? I hadn't actually heard of it until we had initially had our discussion. Yeah, it's really fascinating. I still get goosebumps when I hear about it. Um, So Pilates is all really about, of course, the fundamentals of Pilates is all about alignment in the body. And um, the moves in Pilates are very repetitive and they're sharp moves, um, really spine based moves where we, we continue to keep ourselves in a neutral position. And it's hard for people to really grasp hold of that, to do it properly. And I find that Pilates has found this world of more of a trend rather than the aspect of getting it to people to be able to heal their bodies. So Bringing it back to basics is really what I did when I found the Legree method. The Legree method is a version of Pilates, although they say it's completely different and it is, but it does have the fundamentals of the alignment. It does have the fundamentals of healing. However, Pilates is repetitive motions. Legree is all about non non repetition. So in each class, we do something different, which is really challenging. And we do it at a very slow pace in Legree. Pilates, more sharp repetition. And then Legree is very slow controlled movements, which again, really kind of gets people into knowing their body. When you take things back to basics and try to really concentrate on slow movements, the same as block and breathing, 
it really kind of expedites what they're trying to do in, in the healing process and also brings them into another state of strength. Um, so I've taken the classical world and mixed it with the Pilates world uh, in the Legree world kind of combined and giving them every tool that they possibly need to be the strongest version of themselves. And now, of course, we incorporate the block to be able to get them strong and then healing at the same time. So there's a happy medium there that everybody's really loving here. So so from the Legree method, um, mm-hmm. being slow, would you say it's, I mean, it sounds like it's it's um, pretty intense from the strengthening oh, yeah. perspective, but also is it restorative because it's slow movement or is it more of a slow strengthening and that's more the focus? Yeah, good question. I find, you know, when you do it properly, because tell anybody to go slow in life is really impossible. You know, it's really taking a step back from what we're used to. And there's so many high intensity, high impact workouts that I find people are really doing more damage over time than good. And it's really trying to get them to slow life down and take it into a step-by-step very slow pace motion. And again, they really get in tuned with their bodies and really how strong their spine is. Alignment is everything. And when the body's out of alignment, I tell people all the time, you could be doing a lunge and you may not even feel it in the proper muscle groups. So there's a, there's something in there that I tell people where we need to kind of fix the alignment to be able to feel things properly in the right ways to be able to make a workout successful. There's no point of doing a workout and, and and doing it wrong for many years. And that's how we find a lot of people who've been in the business or have been in the fitness world, you know, maybe work out for 10, 20 years now, and they're finding their aches and pains are starting to get worse over time instead of starting to get better. And that's where I found there was a little bit of a glitch in the in the world of say, not necessarily Pilates, but fitness in general, where people may not be doing things correctly and not taking the time to slow down and really fine tune what they're trying to do. Cause in my opinion, fitness is all about the longevity of, of life and your body and trying to keep it in its ultimate state. And I find so many people doing these high intensity workouts are coming in and they're, they're saying, Oh, I did this and I hurt my shoulder. I hurt my hip or I hurt my knee. And most likely there's not maybe the proper education or the proper guidance that they may be getting from their instructors or whoever it may be. And it may not be their instructor's fault, but just not taking the time, I guess, to focus on what their purpose is for the fitness that they're choosing to do, whatever the, whatever the routine may be. So, you know, the combination of, of, what we've brought down here was really unique because like I said, we give them the super intense workout, slow down, really get to feel where your strengths and weaknesses are, and then fine tuning that into something even better. And it just, I found just even in the last few weeks of training, especially on the block, I, I, the one thing I always tell my students is that you're really getting in touch with your body. You're really getting in tune with it and understanding where your strengths and weaknesses are. And maybe they were having hip pain and they didn't realize it was coming from their shoulder or their feet or their ankles. And, you know, understanding how the body is connected in every single way possible. So now that you're teaching these classes, are you interspersing the block with the Legree or do you teach that and then block as a separate class? And do you do, do them on the same day or, okay, yeah, give me, yeah, give me a I synopsis. I, I, you know, I, it was, it's so new here and I was kind of the pioneer to bring Legree to South Florida as well, where it was so new. Not one person knew the machines. They never knew what it was. They think it's Pilates still to this day. And they kind of describe it as Pilates on steroids because it is so intense and it is so slow. Um, So what I do is I have a stretch and strengthen class that I've kind of incorporated as most of us in the fitness world have gotten used to understanding fitness to be um, an outlet, right? So we're, we're kind of running on, oh, I I love to get out of the house every day and I want to do something every day to get my mind clear, whatever it may be, but not actually taking into consideration that something on a day to day in the fitness world is not always the answer. You really need to give your, to yourself the time and the space to actually recover. And I think that's where there's a little bit of the misconception of a day-to-day routine, yoga, yin yoga, where you can sit and let the body relax, that I 100% agree with. But in our world, 
Legree and or Pilates, it is not intended to be done on a day to day. So I broke up our schedule and I do the Legree method on a day to day, but I saved a couple days in the midweek um, on Wednesday, Thursday nights, and then Sundays to bring it back down to stretch and strengthen where we use our mega formers to do a beautiful flow in class. It's kind of like yoga on the machine where you're working with resistance and it's a nonstop flow. There is no choreography base to it. It's just getting the body to move and to become very fluid. So what I started to do is invite um, block into our stretch and strengthen classes. And we will start on the machine, kind of warm up the body in a very slow few, maybe set of moves, three to four moves. And then we'll incorporate whatever muscle we're stretching onto the block. And we always, I love the belly position. That to me, I tell my members and students, if there's anything you could do on a daily, if you just do that, just for digestion and fine tuning your core and getting your space. I love how we use the the word space in it because it really does create a space for everything to just blossom. And so we'll do a warm up on the machine, save a couple little pieces for the block, but we've actually dedicated now a whole two days on our schedule to block therapy because it became so popular so quick that um, we needed to move our machines aside and open up the floor and give them the real deal of what block is all about. So we incorporate a little bit of both. Oh, wow. And so um, who who's your typical client? You know, it's interesting. I have a lot of doctors sending kids to me now from the ages of 14 up. I guess, you know, there's been this pattern that I've been seeing in the fitness world. So I've been in it since I was in my early 20s. I'll be 46 this year. And I've noticed the younger generation, um, the growth hormones, the things that are changing from the foods that we're eating, the stopping of the growth, uh, whether it be overgrowing or their their plates, their their joints are not growing at the same speed as their muscles. And a lot of doctors putting children on growth hormones, things like that. So it's interesting because in their world, they're saying to tell the kids to go to the Pilates style workouts. And it's not always ideal for the 14, 15 year olds. It's trying to keep the attention span in there and focus on in the classes has been really challenging, but we play great music, let them pick their playlist and all. So we've got ages 14. Um, I think uh, my one of my oldest is probably in their late eighties. So we've got all ranges and everything we do is based upon spring load. So we've got people recovering from hip replacements. We've got professional athletes. We've got everybody in between. So it's really interesting to see the age group coming into our, into our world has, there really has been sky's the limit type of thing. My daughter started when she was 10 and she's been working on the machine over time, you know, just to get her, she's a dancer. So I'd like to get her body in the right proper flow for flexibility. And of course, to help against injury. So I love that you're seeing kids. I've, I've been, yeah. you know, talking for years about, you know, the posture of the youth and, and each decade, I guess now it's I'm I'm coming into three decades of really observing the patterns and how they continue to change. Like every decade they're changing, yeah. not for the better, because of yeah. a raft of things. So for you sure. to be, you know, really targeting kids as well, that really makes me happy because we need this world or or we need the kids to really understand what's changed yeah. in their body and how to give them that direct process back to finding themselves and, and finding that breath inside and that alignment. Because yeah, I, I agree. Like it's, it's really interesting to observe. I remember my dad, he used to love watching uh, old movies and I would walk into the room and he'd be watching like a 1950s, 1960s movie. And it didn't matter the size of the person. They all yeah. had these beautiful, like hourglass figures. They had the, their shoulders were broader than their hips. And I mean, like, you know, they were stacked properly. And then yeah. to see the changes decades after decade and then the last 20 years it's just like been so fast in yeah. what's happened and they're so twisted and so that makes me really happy that you're seeing them because they they need the attention and uh because mm -hmm. yeah I mean like if you think about how that breath is impacting them and, and they're already like that at, as a teenager that's yeah they they need that help now 
Um, muscle, memory. muscle memory is a big thing. And I always say, yeah. if you, know, you get your muscles, they're starting at a very young age to memorize all of the moves. And, you know, with the kids these days, especially on their phones, on their computers, in their constant, uh, you know, falling forward and everything stems from the core. My business is called Core 954. And I believe truly in healing the body from the inside out. And it starts with the spine strength. And I went gotten two major car accidents. Um, unfortunately, I was hit by a drunk driver twice. And I had issues first with my neck, then the second accident was my knees and my back. So I was just an injured bird all the way around. And the first thing I did was start to strengthen my spine. I forget about the limbs right now, but try to get my spine working properly. I got to a place where I couldn't turn my head from left to right. Um, I couldn't walk properly and it threw everything out of whack. So um, believing in where it comes from and giving the children the knowledge of to understand that what they do at that younger age is going to be affecting them 10, 20, 30 years down the road. And as long as they're getting the proper education and doing things right from then, you know, it at least will help them along the line. So, so when you're working with athletes, i um, just curious, uh, yeah. do you find that their bodies are easier to move into new alignment or harder? <laughs> Opposite. They Again, repetitive motion, right? They're so used to powerlifting. I remember when I trained your uh, Canadian swim team, I was working with the swim team, cross country ski team and water polo team. And my head coach was fantastic. But I remember walking into their facility in Montreal, and I was watching them train these children. Again, they were in 19, 17 to 25 ish. And um, powerlifting, oh, powerlifting, overhead, deep squats. I mean, for me coming out of my accidents, I would cringe just watching it, but I understood they knew the pa they needed that power. They needed the power, the push, the strength. Um, however, it was interesting because the one complaint that the coach had was they're feeling heavy in the water. And I thought, well, they're swimmers, you know, how is that possible? And then I looked deeper into how they were being trained and that power lifting was weakening their joints. So I was dealing with shoulder injuries, underlying issues. They never knew they had hip injuries, knee injuries, and it could range anywhere really in the body. Once we had started to strengthen the core and we did very basic mat work because I had to travel with them. So I had to be very mobile. It's not like I could bring my machines anywhere I went. So I got a couple bands, a couple balls and little things to just try to work with them in, in a mat size setting. And within three months, the coach came to me and the head coach and said, they feel like they're floating again. And I thought, fantastic. You know, well, in my mind, you know, I'm thinking they should have felt that way before. But what it did, it just gave them their spine strength. And we did a lot of breathing techniques. We incorporated and paired our breath with movement and tried to get them to understand how the body works instead of just listening to direction and doing what somebody was told, they would actually understand like, okay, when I breathe a certain way, my muscles contract, there's a detox process going on on my exhalation. And this is going back 20 some years ago. So the breath is important to me in general. And most people don't breathe when they work out properly, unless they're in a setting of my more of a peaceful state. And, you know, you can get them into a state of breath, but they don't, it's not a conscious way to breathe. So just that alone and understanding how to breathe in a more lateral way and breathing in through the rib cage and lungs and rather than just small breaths here and there, I think the knowledge that they had, they kind of took with them out into the pool and into the swimming world or into the water polo world and just tried to give them more of guidance in that sense. And it stuck. So they did very well. They did They did great at their meets and competitions the following year. So I'm really grateful for that. And we still all keep in touch till this day. So it's beautiful. Oh, that's awesome. And I, I love that because I mean, just I, I, I share all the time about when we start to really oxygenate our cells, it's like we're blowing up balloons, right? So like, oh, instead yeah. of having those cells be sticky and dense and heavy that gravity manipulates and pulls us down, now we can glide through life and almost defy gravity as we start to that effortless effort. That's what the goal yeah. is, right? Yeah. Right. Right. I agree. 100%. So do you also do any online training, any zoom classes, or are you a hundred percent in your facility? 
Well, since the pandemic, of course, we had to change our business structure. You know, we're a very boutique, small style studio. We're the only Legree studio in all of Fort Lauderdale. I still don't understand how that's possible, but we are. And so we only have nine spaces per class. So we get really busy, especially in snowbird season. When the pandemic hit, we um, started to get into more of the online. And then because we were so boutique and so small, we were one of the first people to get back into the real world and get people back in because we were only at that time, only five spaces. So we we had not started the online program on our system yet, but now we have the whole back end ready to go. I've already started filming some videos for the block because that for me, it was, again, it's hard to work on the online platform when we really depend on our machines, but since the block has come into our world, I I believe there again, no pun intended, but there's a core group of moves that I really want my people to do on a day-to-day basis. And even if they're at home or they can't get to class. So that has really kind of got us launched into the whole online world. So yes, we do have it now and we're keeping, we're keeping up with adding more videos as we go. And we'll incorporate a little bit of strength training, maybe some breathing techniques, but the block is really the one thing I want to focus on with, uh, with the online stuff, since it's very convenient to do so and like I said, I, I I don't see many people on a day to day due to the method that we teach in the Legree method. However, that is something I agree people can do on a day to day, and if they could incorporate it, even if it's five minutes a day, I told them it'd be life changing. Wonderful. Yeah. Do you have uh, anything else you'd like to share for everybody? Well, we'll make sure that all of your links, people can find you. Um, everything will be listed below this video. But um, is there anything else that you'd like to share about what you do? What makes you unique? You know, um, life is a journey and I have taken everything that I have learned along my way. Um, I grew up in a world where I was 14. I was very sick, diagnosed with colon cancer, and I never actually had it. They misdiagnosed me. So I had gone through the first 20 years of my life trying to figure out why I was so sick. And doctors didn't have answers. They treated me as if I had cancer. So I was on trial medication after trial medication. And I've since healed myself 100%. And I still am trying to figure out where that change exactly came from. But I went into really raw foods lifestyle at a young age. I was drinking green juices when they still tasted like dirt. And it was awful at the time, but it was so healing for me. And I was in a world of health and nutrition because I was forced to. And I look back on it now and it was the biggest blessing I ever had to have gone through that state and learned so much because it's brought me where I am today. And I truly believe that experience and trial and error is one way that we learn in life. And for me to be able to share that information due to the trials that I had been through in life, whether it be my illness or my car accidents. I mean, now it's like, since I turned 35, 40 years old, everything's been a breeze. So I had it all early, early in early in life. But my in my world, I'm, I'm an open book. And I really want to, my purpose is to, to educate people and let them be the ones who decide how to change what their purpose or reasoning may be is very different than mine and from the person next to them and their neighbors. But I believe so much in giving everybody the tools and the proper education to take with them along their journey. And the things that I had to go through at a very young age are things that people are are dealing with later in life. And so I can understand them on so many different levels, just having experienced it. So I'm just, I get chills when I think about how blessed I am in the world that I've kind of been thrown into because Pilates was not going to be my original plan. I was going to be an actress in LA. And and after my accident, my career just came to a screeching halt, but it's made me who I am. And for this, I'm so grateful because I, I know the experience will help so many people in their lives. And I've had the most beautiful family that we've created in a community of people all over the world since we are melting pot here in Fort Lauderdale. We literally get everybody from everywhere. So I I, I just want to share that information and, and be able to help as many people as I possibly can. That's the most rewarding part out of all of it. 
Well, you just exude passion for what you're doing and you are stunning and you look so incredibly healthy. So I, I'm I had no idea you had such a challenging uh, earlier time in your life, but isn't it amazing when you do and what that brings forward into the world? I think that I, in fact, funny enough, I just saw um, a sign the other day as I was driving that said, there is no saint that doesn't have a something, yep. past, something that's like that. But it's, that's absolutely. True, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we learn through, we learn through experience and I mean, that really gives you that wisdom to have empathy, which I think is one of the most important things, Huge. right. To Huge. understand and relate. And I mean, it doesn't have to be specific, but to understand that level of suffering and then to be there as a, as a guide for others. It's, it's beautiful. I'm so thrilled that mm-hmm. you found block therapy and you saw it as being a compliment to what you're already doing. So That's thank you great. so much for being here and <laughs> for sharing and yeah. again, we'll have all of your links below, but um, if people want to reach out to you, where can they find you? Yes. Um, well, core954.com is our website and we're right here in sunny South Florida. So I know a lot of the, a lot of your Canadians come down here pretty much once a year. I usually see them right around November. <laughs> so we're around in case anybody from up there comes down to visit us here in the, in the snowbird season. So yeah, we'll give you all that information in our links. Core954.com is our website and uh, we are right here in the heart of Fort Lauderdale. So uh, well, I'm a little envious of you, I have to say, <laughs> for having such You're beautiful welcome. weather year round. <laughs> yeah, true. A little couple storms here and there, but you know, hop on the block, de-stress. Fair when- enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. And thank you all for listening. And by all means, check out Erica's site. Sounds amazing. And if you happen to be in Fort Lauderdale, I think this would be an incredible experience. Yes. I do plan on getting there, hopefully this winter. So um, yes. if I do, I will be, I will be, uh, checking out Legree because it sounds fascinating and I want to give that a try from the master that you are so thank you everybody thank you Erica and have a wonderful day beautiful